In this video, we will talk about electrothermal analysis of multi-technology designs. So we try to understand what is multi-technology design. Well, whenever you have two or more different technologies assembled as a single uh, design piece which needs to be analyzed is what we call as multi-technology design. And there are a couple of examples demonstrated on this slide where you may have an IC along with laminate or package and this kind of assembly needs to be analyzed. Well, before we can start analyzing, the question is how do we assemble these kind of multi-technology designs in ADS? In ADS, we have a concept called Smart Mount, which makes the complex technology assembly job very easy. This capability is very simple to perform, no matter how complex assembly you would like to create. It's very powerful, very versatile, and very scalable so that designers have all the capabilities needed to work out some of these complex assembly. So we will talk about all of these uh, topics in this video. So stay tuned till the end and enjoy the learning. All right, so let's get started. Here is my first test bench where I have a module example. And this is, um, you know, configured to this so that we can run an S parameter analysis. If we look down the hierarchy, you will see an MMIC die subcircuit and a very simplistic laminate assembly which only contains few interconnecting wires which in layout will represent it by the traces and few bond wires. Now, if we look at the layout of this assembly, you get a better sense. So here you can see a pretty simplistic um, you know, laminate design with four transmission lines and a die is mounted on top of that laminate. If I go to 3D view in ADS layout, you can get a better sense of this entire assembly where you can see the six layer laminate, all the ground layers and the IC is mounted on top, connected to laminate via these bond wires. Now, how do we go about configuring this kind of assembly? Well, let's look at the ADS main window here. And I have quite a few libraries here. So the libraries of our interest are these two. We have an MMIC amplifier library and I have my laminate library. Now, whenever you want to declare any library as a smart mount library or a cell as a smart mount cell, you can simply right click on the library or you can go to the layout and open the cell properties. So let me show you a much easier way of going to library, technology and look at nested technology. Here in the smart mount setting, you can choose it to be either bottom mount or flip chip and then set rest of the options appropriately. If you selected a bottom mount, like in this case, we can simply use map layer and assign so that everything is nicely aligned in the stack. But if we select a flip chip, I would typically prefer to put layer on top so that the flip chip IC is mounted on top of the laminate or the board where we might want to keep. More details about all these alignments can be found in ADS documentation. So let's go ahead and reverse it to bottom mount, map layer and assign. Now since we are doing the assignment on the library wide, you can select this option to apply the same settings for all the designs in the library. So pretty simple step number one. Now once this library is configured to be smart mount, well, you can open up this design, simply drag and drop it and place it into the laminate or the package design. Here, notice the IC is designed in micron kind of units, which is very typical for any MMIC or RFIC. But the package on the lower right hand side is working on millimeter precision. Still, when we place these instances, there is no conflict of units or no conflict of technology because ADS now has all the information behind the scene. So that's how I have placed and assigned, you know, connected the bond wire. So that's part number one. Now let's look at the substrate of each of these individual technologies. If I go to IC technology, I have a substrate named tech.subs. Now this substrate I have copied over from the MMIC PDK, which has a demo thermal substrate. Now if you are using any foundry PDK, which is thermally enabled, you will have something similar. So I simply copied over this substrate into my working library and renamed it as tech.substrate. 
because in multi technology design when ads builds up a composite stack up it simply refers to this name as the default tech.subs so once we rename it now when we perform uh, em simulation or electrothermal simulation it knows where to get this stack up information from so it's a pretty simple rule to remember now once we have everything set up uh, we have already created our master assembly design uh, here and that design is used in this test bench as you can see now we can proceed to generate the thermal file for this um, you know heterogeneous structure or multi technology assembly so by opening uh, the stack up of the laminate you can see i have three layers defined here oh sorry six layer stack up and if you go to multi uh, the material definition you can see the definition assigned for conductor and the dielectric and all the thermal properties have been duly mentioned similarly if you look at the mmic amplifier you will also see all the information for all the layers already included now this will be defined in the thermally enabled pdk so you you really don't need to dig out all this information because all this information is already available for laminate because it's your own specific technology you might want to declare the thermal properties properly all right with all this done now we can go ahead and generate the thermal files now if we go ahead and generate the thermal file as it is all the files will be created inside a workspace folder which may or may not be having the desired effect because there are tons of file inside the workspace folder so instead what we could do is right click uh, and go ahead and configure the library and here we can designate a spatial folder as you can see here under the workspace file i have created a folder called thermal files so that i can you know put all the information necessary at a central place now once we have that configuration done we can go ahead go to file export and we can create our own thermal files and here if we are using a smart mount in our design of course we select yes choose the top level assembly layout and this is the one which we were talking about just now click ok and now you can see your thermal files have been created and ignore these warnings that's fine now if we go and explore uh, the thermal files folder under this workspace and look at the content you will find tech.tcl stream layer and heat layer cfg those are the three main files required for electrothermal analysis opening the tech.tcl you can see it has all the information about the layer properties the thermal property of the the laminate as well as it has um, all the smart mount rc information which is basically an mmic if you have more than one ic uh, in your stack up you will have sm2 sm3 definitions and so on so basically you have all the files necessary now to run electrothermal analysis now here uh, let's run a normal electrical simulation first and look at the overall assembly performance in here you can notice the gain is around 16 db in the frequency range of interest which is pretty good now we would like to perform electrothermal analysis so let's activate electrothermal controller double click on it and now select the right library because right now we are no longer only using ic technology rather we want to use our smart mount uh, composite library tech.tcl so we select that library go to browse and under the thermal files folder this is the file which we just created now we are all ready to run electrothermal but before that let's go ahead and switch on history so that these traces are there in the graph for our comparison purpose and let's go ahead and run this electrothermal analysis now on my laptop it takes couple of minutes to run this analysis so i'll pause this video and resume the video once the analysis is done okay now the simulation is complete as you can see it took approximately two minutes to run on my laptop and here is the slight degradation in the result due to the thermal performance of the chip where the gain has gone down by 0.3 db uh, due to presence of the thermal uh, behavior of the chip but it's not that too bad it's only 0.3 db loss if you look at the electrothermal viewer plot we can see the peak temperature to be 51 
which is not that bad considering this was not a very high power amplifier and doesn't have a lot of heat uh, dissipated due to the DC biasing condition. So it's pretty good. Now you can also look at the thermal uh, surface plot and here you can see the kind of MMIC dye and the temperature rise in this multi technology assembly and you can inspect the you know individual finger performance now another interesting thing you can also do is push this slider uh, down to the top level of the laminate and here you can see the temperature is much lesser but as soon as you start going into IC you start to see the temperature building up and similar information you can also get here by moving the slider to the top level in your laminate and here by simple right clicking you can see the temperature and how it cools down across various layers of the laminate. So that's all for this video. I hope you find this content useful for your work and you would be able to apply it in your own multi-technology designs. Thanks a lot for watching and wish you all the best in your design work.